Ico Ico is a much-covered New Orleans song that tells of a parade collision between two tribes of Mardi Gras Indians and the traditional confrontation. The song, under the original title Jock A. Mo, was written in 1953 by James Sugarboy Crawford in New Orleans. The story tells of a spy boy encountering the flag boy, awkward and carrier for another tribe. He threatens to set the flag on fire. Crawford set phrases chanted by Mardi Gras Indians to music for the song. Crawford himself states that he has no idea what the words mean, and that he originally sang the phrase Chocomo, but the title was mishead by Chess Records and Checker Records president Leonard Chess, who misspelled it as Chocomo for the record's release. Chocomo was the original version of the song Ico Ico recorded by the Dixie Cups in 1965. Their version was the result of an unplanned jam in a New York City recording studio where they began an impromptu version of Ico Ico, accompanying themselves with drumsticks on an aluminum chair, a studio ashtray and a Coke bottle. Recording history, the Dixie Cups, who had learned Ico, Ico from hearing their grandmother sing it, also knew little about the origin of the song and so the original authorship credit went to the members, Barbara Ann Hawkins, her sister Rosa Lee Hawkins, and their cousin Joan Marie Johnson. After the Dixie Cups version of the Ico Ico was released in 1965, they and their record label, Red Bird Records, were sued by James Crawford, who claimed that Ico Ico was the same as his composition Giacomo. Although the Dixie Cups denied that the two compositions were similar, the lawsuit resulted in a settlement in 1967 with Crawford making no claim to authorship or ownership of Ico Ico, but being credited 25% for public performances, such as on radio, of Ico Ico in the United States. Even though a back-to-back -back listening of the two recordings clearly demonstrates that Ico Ico was practically the same song as Crawford's Giacomo, Crawford's rationale for the settlement was motivated by years of legal battles with no royalties. In the end, he stated, I'd only a Euro unregistered trademark to even know if I really am getting my just dues. I just figure 50% of something is better than 100% of nothing. In the 1990s, the Dixie Cups became aware that another group of people were claiming authorship of Ico Ico. Their ex-manager Joe Jones and his family filed a copyright registration in 1991, alleging that they wrote the song in 1963. Joe Jones successfully licensed Ico Ico outside of North America, and it was used as the soundtrack of Mission Impossible 2 in 2000. The Dixie Cups filed a lawsuit against Joe Jones. The trial took place in New Orleans and the Dixie Cups were represented by well-known music attorney Oren Warshavsky before senior federal judge Peter Beer. The jury returned a unanimous verdict on March 6, 2002 affirming that the Dixie Cups were the only writers of Ico Ico, and granting them more money than they were seeking. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals upheld the jury verdict and sanctioned Joe Jones. The song is regularly performed by artists from New Orleans such as the Neville Brothers, Larry Williams, Dr. John, The Radiators, Willie DeVille, Buckwheat Zydeco, Irma Thomas and Zachary Richard, and can often be heard on the streets and in the bars of New Orleans, especially during Mardi Gras. It has been also been covered by Cindy Lauper, The Grateful Dead, Cowboy Mouth, Warren Zevon, Long John Baldry, Dave Matthews and Friends, The Ordinary Boys, Glass Candy, and Sharon, Lois and Bram, among others. Amy Holland covered the song on the soundtrack of the film K-9, Aaron Carter covered the song for 2000's The Little Vampire soundtrack and filmed a music video for it. The Dixie Cups performed the song on the soundtrack of the film The Skeleton Key and the Bell Stars cover was featured in the films Rain Man, Knock In on Heaven's Door and The Hangover. Justine Bateman, Julia Roberts, Britta Phillips and Trinay Alvarado performed the song in the 1988 film Satisfaction. A later version by Zap Mama, with rewritten lyrics, was featured in the opening sequences of the film Mission, Impossible 2. Eurodance act Captain Jack repopularized the tune in Germany in 2001. Rolf Harris in 1965 recorded a cover version with slightly altered words, removing references to flag boys, and other regionally specific lyrics, although much of the Creole patois remained as a sort of nonsense scat. 
This version made the song popular in England and Australia in the 1960s. The song's most successful UK version was that of singer Natasha England, who took it into the top 10 in 1982. Her version, released the same week as the Bell Stars's recording, charted higher and significantly outsold their rival version. The Bell Stars version would be released in the United States in 1988, where it would peak at 14 on the Billboard Hot 100 in March 1989, outcarting the Dixie Cups version. The England's recording was produced by Tom Newman. Oddly, the Larry Williams version, included on the Speciality Records Larry Williams CD released in 1989, although it was recorded on April 26, 1957, still credits the song as being written by Hawkins, Hawkins and Johnson though the Dixie Cups did not record it for another eight years. Dr. John's story, following as the Ico Ico story, as told by Dr. John in the liner notes to his 1972 album, Dr. John's Gumbo, in which he covers New Orleans R&B classics. The song was written and recorded back in the early 1950s by a New Orleans singer named James Crawford who worked under the name of Sugar Boy and the Cane Cutters. It was recorded in the 1960s by the Dixie Cups for Jerry Labor and Mike Stoller's Red Bird Records, but the format we're following here is Sugar Boy's original. Also in the group were Professor Longhair on piano, Jake Mills, Big Boy Mills, Ive Bannister on guitar, and Eugene Bones Jones on drums. The group was also known as the Chipaka Showways. The song was originally called Joke Carmo, and it has a lot of Creole patois in it. Joke Carmo means jester in the old myth. It is Mardi Gras music, and the Showways was one of many Mardi Gras groups who dressed up in far out Indian costumes and came on as Indian tribes. The tribes used to hang out on Claiborne Avenue and used to get juiced up there getting ready to perform and second line in their own special style during Mardi Gras. That's dead and gone because there's a freeway where those grounds used to be. The tribes were like social clubs who lived all year for Mardi Gras, getting their costumes together. Many of them were musicians, gamblers, hustlers and pimps. Sugar Boy Crawford's story, James Sugar Boy Crawford, gave a 2002 interview with Offbeat magazine discussing the song's meaning. Interviewer, how did you construct Jock Amo? Crawford, it came from two Indian chants that I put music to. A Euro Oe Iko Iko Euro was like a victory chant that the Indians would shout. A Euro Oe Jock Amo Euro was a chant that was called when the Indians went into battle. I just put them together and made a song out of them. Really it was just like Lordy Miss Claudie. That was a phrase everybody in New Orleans used. Lloyd Price just added music to it and it became a hit. I was just trying to write a catchy song, interviewer, listeners wonder what Jock A. Mo means. Some music scholars say it translates in Mardi Gras Indian lingo as kiss my ass, and a Euro unregistered trademark they read where some think Jock A. Mo was a court jester. What does it mean? Crawford, I really don't know. Linguistic origins, Linguists and historians have proposed a variety of origins for the seemingly nonsensical chorus, suggesting that the words may come from a melange of cultures. According to linguist Jeffrey D. Kimball, the lyrics of the song are derived in part from Mobilian jargon, an extinct Native American trade language consisting mostly of Choctaw and Chickasaw words and once used by Southeastern Indians, African Americans, and European settlers and their descendants in the Gulf Coast region. In Mobilian jargon, an oak unregistered trademark marfana was a commonly used phrase, meaning very good. A translation of Louisiana Creole French interprets the words of the entire chorus as Ina, Ina, a cout, a cout, and da copyright ya cha kamia fi no wana na copyright, cha kamia fi na na copyright. In English, this equates to Hey now, hey now. Listen, listen at the back, all our love made our king be born, all our love made it happen. Another possible translation interprets the third and fourth lines as Trukma finna and dan da copyright ya trukma finna lane. From Chickasaw words trukma and finna, the Creole and dan da copyright ya from the French Creole and dan's da copyright ya, and the Creole lane from the French anna copyright e. In English, this equates to it's very good at the rear, it's very good year. 
In a 2009 Offbeat article, however, the Ghanaian social linguist Dr. Aversh Damuza said the chorus was definitely West African, reflecting West African tonal patterns. The article also notes that the phrase Aiko Euro often doubled as Aiko, Aiko Euro is a popular chant meaning well done, or congratulations among the Akan and U people in modern day Togo, Ghana, and Benin. Both groups were heavily traded during the slave trade, often to Haiti, which served as a way station for Louisiana. Use in particular are credited with bringing West African cultural influences like West African Vodun rights from West Africa to Haiti and on to New Orleans. Musicologist Ned Sublett has backed the idea that the chorus might have roots in Haitian slave culture, considering that the rhythms of Mardi Gras Indians are nearly indistinguishable from the Haitian Kata rhythm. Yoquimo, he has also noted, was a common name among Taino people, who inhabited Haiti in the early years of the slave trade. Jacamo Finaui is also, whether coincidentally or not, the phrase the black cat is here in Bambara, a West African Mandingo language. In a 1991 lecture to the New Orleans Social Science History Association, Dr. Sibyl Keane proposed the following translation from Yoruba and Creole. Code language. God is watching, Jacalman causes it. We will be emancipated, Jacalman urges it. We will wait. Voodoo practitioners would recognize many aspects of the song as being about spirit possession. The practitioner, the horse, waves a flag representing a certain god to literally flag down that god into himself or herself. Setting a flag on fire is a way of cursing someone. The song also mentions a man dressed in green who either has a change in personality or is in some way not what he seems to be. That would be recognized in voodoo as a person being possessed by a spirit from the peaceful Radha realm who has a preference for green clothes and does love magic or fertility as their telltale characteristics. The man in the song who is dressed in red, and who is being sent after someone to kill them, would likely be a person possessed by a spirit from the vengeful Patro realm who has a preference for red clothing and who has revenge or some other destructive quality among their characteristics. The relationship of the song to voodoo practices is celebrated in the movie The Skeleton Key, whose plot revolves around the practice of hoodoo. Pop culture usage, films, the Dixie Cups version was included on the soundtrack to the 1987 film The Big Easy. This version was also used on the soundtrack of the 2005 movie The Skeleton Key. The Bell Stars version of Ico Ico is used in a trailer for 20th Century Fox Family Features and in the opening scene of the 1988 film Rain Man. The Todd Phillips movie The Hangover pays homage to this with a scene in which the men attempt to win money at blackjack by counting cards. An a cappella version of the song was performed by Britta Phillips, Julia Roberts, Justine Bateman, and Trini Alvarado in the 1988 film Satisfaction. The song was performed by Amy Holland for the 1989 film K9. A version by Zap Mama appears in the opening scene of the 2000 film Mission, Impossible 2. A version by Aaron Carter is performed during the end credits of The Little Vampire. A version by Amit Kumar is performed in the Hindi movie Kishan Canaria. Television a modified version was created for a Nickelodeon Nation campaign. The song was performed by Dr. John during halftime of the 2008 NBA All-Star Game in New Orleans and again in 2014. In 2009, a version based on the Dixie Cups was used in an ad for Lipton Rainforest Alliance Ice Tea. South African artist Kurt Darren created his own version of the song, entitled Ico Ico. In 1989, Moa Yar covered this song in season one of the all-new Mickey Mouse Club. In the Kids Incorporated episode Pollution Problems, Kids Incorporated covered this song. Actress Kim Dickens' character Jeanette sings it while wandering the streets during Mardi Gras in episode 8, season one of the HBO series Dream. It also features in episode 4, season 3 of the series. It was used as an opening song in Miss USA 2014 which was held in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Other, The Grateful Dead covered this song as early as May 1977. Cindy Lauper covered the song in her 1986 album True Colors. Arbita Brewing Company produces a beer called Joke Carmo IPA. 
the band's Hüter currency or NEFA paragraph IFI released a Swiss German version, HOA Euro NEZNACHT is Bet, which has become a popular children's song in Switzerland. In 2009, the band re recorded their version with the Dixie Cups and the Hot 8 Brass Band in New Orleans. Advertising agency Saatchi and Saatchi used the track as backing for a Cadbury Chocolates Australia 2014 AD campaign. References External links Origins of the song Ico Ico AMG website Full lyrics of this song at Metro Lyrics